this is Mike. I am going to show you how to pine tar a pair of wooden skis. This is my original pair of skis, my first pair of skis that I got when I was in high school. Uh, we learned how to cross country ski in, in high school. It was the new rage around 1977. We were the first class to uh, have skis and at that time the only skis we had were wooden skis and most of them came from Norway uh, along with bamboo poles and um, low cut ankle cut uh, cross country ski boots at that time it looked a lot like Nike shoes but um, it was a lot of fun and you know we if you wanted to if you're in high school and you didn't have a lot of dough then you had to know how to do all this stuff yourself you had to pine tire your own skis you had to wax them and uh, in fact at that time there were only probably one or two places in our town or in our city that you could get your skis pine tarred and waxed. I think today it is even less than that because I don't know anybody that pine tars. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And um, we're going to do it with pretty simple tools, things that you probably have around your house or you can buy uh, very inexpensively. So I'm going to show you first of all the tools that we'll need and the materials that we'll need today. And we're going to first pine tar our wood skis and then I'll show you in another video how to wax. A word about safety when you're doing this. I always keep a big tumbler of water just in case I get a flame up on maybe for example my rag and I can douse it with water. Um, but if something gets more serious, I always have a fully charged um, fire suppression with me. So I've never had a fire, but they can sure happen. Uh, for the beginners there, when you're, especially when you're working with your pine tar and it's in the can and you're heating it, if you see smoke coming out, it's too hot. Get it off of that heat source. And um, obviously you can have flare-ups when you're using the torch on your skis with the uh, with the pine tar, if that catches on fire, you, you ruin your skis. So you don't want to do that. Keep your keep your torch moving, 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 and uh, lift the torch up, wipe the skis away, and keep your torch and your and your rag separate. You don't want to accidentally cross that pine tar and wax filled rag over your flame, or you could have a mess. Something that your wife won't appreciate. Let's look at some of the things that we'll need, some of the equipment and materials we're going to need. First of all, you're going to need plenty of rags. This is mostly to wipe off excess um, pine tar and some of the wax when we're cleaning up our skis. This is just terry cloth from some old um, towels. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some propane gas with a burner. Obviously you'll need a lighter to light your burner. You're also going to need a, um, a brush to apply the pine tar to the skis. Now, when we do this, the pine tar is going to be hot, so some of the adhesive on brushes may come off, especially some of the low-cost bristle brushes. So I use foam. They're cheap. They work well. But I do find that sometimes the foam separates from the handle. So I take a stapler, and I just staple the foam onto the handle. You want a scraper if you have a lot of excess wax that you want to remove from the ski. And finally, you'll need some pine tar. This pine tar I bought about 30 years ago and I have five uh, pairs of wooden skis that I pine tar at least once per year and I also pine tar my toboggan sled, my wooden toboggan sled that I use for hauling gear when I go winter camping. So a quart of pine tar will last you a long time. The cost for a pine, or this is a quart, a quart of pine tar is somewhere between 10 to 20 dollars now. So it's not a very big investment. So with that said, let's get started with our pine tarring. First let's have a look at the ski and our equipment. You can see that I have the uh, 
skis in a vise. Now, on the jaws of the vise, I've glued leather strips on both sides. That prevents the metal of the jaws of the vise from damaging my skis. You'll notice that on the floor, I cover with, um, with rags. With These are old bed sheets. You can use cardboard or something like that if you like. But I like to try to uh, keep the wax off my floors. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a scraper and we're going to scrape off any of the old wax that we find on our skis. Too much old wax on these skis. They think I skied all the wax off. In fact, I can see that for the most part they're clean. Now I do know that there is some wax that's impregnated down into the wood because uh, I hot wax my skis. So I'm going to use a torch to heat up the skis and then take off some of that, uh, that wax. We're going to wipe it off. Now here you can see I'm scraping the skis. I really don't have much wax on mine. It's left over. Another tool that I like to use is an old pencil because I can take this pencil and run it down the middle of the groove and on these wooden skis they had a, a rounded groove. On the newer fiberglass skis of course those grooves are, um, are square but if there's any wax down in those grooves I can get those off. I can get that out mechanically. Now we'll have a look at these skis. We'll go down and just have an assessment of the condition of the skis. You can see you know, these skis are, well, 40 years old, so they have a lot of scratches on them, and, uh, but in generally, pretty good condition, not bad at all. You can see the beautiful lignostone edges, that uh, the compressed wood edges that they used uh, before they started to have composite skis where they used, uh, were now of course, metal edges if you're going to be a backcountry skier. Really, these skis are a work of art. That's what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use a torch to melt the wax so they can uh, use a rag then to clean it up with. Uh, it's, uh, it might be running a little bit low on fuel, but I open up the gas. There we go. I don't want to have too much flame. Just enough. You see that? I'm just getting that down a little bit. There we go. And what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of my rags and I start at the tip, which you might not be able to see on the film, but I just heat it up and then I wipe. I want to keep the flame away from my rag because obviously that rag is going to be a, uh, that rag is going to be full of wax and it's going to be flammable. Now one thing that you don't see in the film is I have in this room right over by the camera my uh, fire extinguisher. It's important when you do this stuff that you have a fire extinguisher. So I'm going to try to show you what this looks like with the camera as I run the flame over the as I run the flame over the skis you can see the wax melt. I won't be able to wipe it because I only have one hand free, one with the camera and one with the flame. Now, you see as I do this, you can see some of that wax is, is already coming to the surface. I'm going to wipe that. There's not much. It's pretty dry. These skis are pretty dry and pretty clean. There's not going to be a lot for me to do. Now 
Now, earlier, you might have noticed that when I was going over this with my uh, straight edge, my spatula, I felt some kind of a, a burr of some kind. So, you can take some very fine paper. This happens to be 320 uh, wet or dry. And you can go over some of those spots that you feel might be, you know, might be a little bit rough. <clears throat> now, you might like to use a... Uh, a sanding block so you get a nice straight flatness. I'm not being quite that particular, but you certainly could be. Next I've got to heat the pine tar up and the pine tar normally is very thick. You can see inside the can there it it almost looks like wax so I've got it on a hot plate now if you're going to use a flame uh, like a let's say the oven in your house then you need to use a double boiler you don't want to put this pine tar directly on flame and uh, you know but with a an electric hot plate like this it works okay the um, it will start to smoke if it gets too hot so if you're doing this in in the house you've got to be very very careful you got to watch it all the time don't let it get too hot so just about the time it starts melting gets liquid you can start putting it on and uh, I usually I'll paint the whole ski at one time and then go over it with the torch um, I know that some guys they like to uh, take this the uh, pine tar and do it a section at a time but I don't see that there's any reason to do that I apply it all over the ski and then I heat it up Pine tar is ready now. Um, if I lift it up, you can see that it's liquid. The can is not so hot that I can't hold it. And um, that's going to be good enough. You can see that I've turned the, the heat way down. It's starting to give off the smell of pine tar in the room. That's a smell I actually like, but um, you don't want to overdo it and you don't want it to start smoking or to um, burst into flames. So. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to now take the pine tar and I'm going to put it on the ski. Now, um, where you find pine tar, I mentioned that you might be able to find it at your hardware store. Typically, pine tar is used in the uh, horse husbandry. So if you can find a tack shop or some place that supports um, uh, horse, uh, you know, horse tack, I guess you could say, uh, you might find pine tar there. It's used on the hooves of horses. Um, as an antiseptic and in fact that's what it does to the skis the reason that we pine tar our skis is it's a type of antiseptic and it keeps the uh, the wood from from rotting and decaying well the next part's easy um, we're going to put the pine tar onto the skis my applicator you notice that the can is not so hot that I can't hold it, so it doesn't have to be very hot. In fact, I'm going to take the can off of the heat, and then I just paint it on. I'm going to do this on the whole length of the ski. Now, it's important that you get all that old wax off like we did in the previous um, section, because if you don't, then the wax will, of course, act as a barrier, and it will keep the pine tar from soaking into the wood. So let's have a look now at what this looks like when we put it on. It's pretty. You can see this section. I've already put a little bit of the pine tar on. Go ahead and paint some more on here. Get down into the groove. You don't have to put this on very thick. If you put too much on, most of it's going to get wiped off. So just put just enough to get a nice little layer on there. And after this, we're going to take a torch and we're going to heat this up. It's going to heat the, the skis up and it's going to heat the pine tar up. And it's going to cause the wood grains to expand and absorb the pine tar. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this ski and we'll start baking it in after that.
So the next step is to use the flame to open up the pores of the wood and allow that pine tar to get down in it. I'm going to have my cloth with me. I want to make sure that I use a cloth that doesn't have some wax on it. So if I happen to have an old cloth that maybe had some wax in it, I won't use that. Now, normally, I would start at one end and work my way back. I can't get it on camera, so I'm going to show you what I do. So here I start. I'm going to heat it up, and then just it's starting to boil. The pine tar starts to boil, and then I wipe some off. Boil. You, can, you might see a wisp of smoke coming off. Now, what you want to be very careful of is you do not want to burn your skis when you do this. It pays very good and very close attention. All right. I mean, let's have a look at what this looks like. Close up. All right, here we go. Keep that flame moving. You don't want to have that flame stop anywhere. One of the challenges is getting it down into the groove. You can see there. Without scorching some of the rest of the wood around it. So now, you can see we've heated that up. Now I wipe it off. You can see some pools of the excess. And you can see on my rag, the um, you can see the pine tar that I'm collecting. So obviously, as I mentioned before, you don't want to have too much pine tar on your ski. It's not necessary. So you're heating it up again. And we, you don't want it to be tacky when you're done. So when you're done pine tarring, it should have a good smooth feel to it. It shouldn't feel tacky, especially with your rag. You know, with your fingers is one thing, but your rag is going to be more telling than your fingers. Oh yeah. That's nice. Finally, there's one technique. I've, I've done the whole ski where I've heated everything up and uh, wiped off the, the excess. Now what I'm going to do is just as a finale, there's going to be a little bit of excess that I don't see when I first go over my ski. So I'm just going to keep my flame moving. And every once in a while I'll see some spots where it uh, bubbles up and flames up, shows me that I've got a little bit extra somewhere. And as I do this, I can feel that the ski is getting a little bit less tacky as I'm capturing some of that excess uh, pine tar that's on there. Keeping my rag away from the flame. Let's have a look at the skis. This, the ski here on the top of your view is the ski that we did not do. The one underneath is a finished ski and you can see the, uh, that it's darker. You can see the pine tar in it. The, uh, the other the, the, they weren't in bad shape before we did them. So in some extreme cases where they're bone dry, the bottom of the skis can look um, almost white. Now in this particular case, um, you know, I tried to take good care of my skis so they weren't in that bad of shape. You can see how they look when you're done pine tarring. Here we have our freshly pine tarred skis. They are pretty. You can see the beautiful lignostone edges on them. The skis, again, these are 40 year old skis. They're just skis I had in high school, it's skied thousands of miles on them using for, for camping and for touring expedition. These are a little bit wider, you know, in, uh, when I started skiing in the 70s there weren't that many trails. Of course there were trails, but 
a lot of the trails that, that we had were um, guys just going out and skiing and making trails in the local parks or in the in the state forest or the national forest and then we all knew where they were and we'd go skiing on them and uh, if you're cutting your own trails and the skis deep maybe two feet or so deep then you'd want your skis to be a little bit wider and a little bit longer in the old days the old days you know used to be the way to measure was to reach your hand up over the tip of your skis. Part of that was because the camber of the skis um, was designed for average weight guys so that when the ski would flex, it would touch the snow just right. But another reason was that because a lot of guys were skiing off trail, that gave you the, uh, the amount of suspension that was kind of averagely good, the width and the, and the length. Of course, there were skinnier skis too, and those skis were used if you're going to be skiing mostly trails. And really, that hasn't changed much today. So for the guys that are skiing off trail, uh, they need wider skis and probably longer skis. And for the guys that are skiing on trail, the uh, you know skinnier is okay. So it's a beautiful pair of wood trisel nut skis um, made in Norway back in the 1970s. They still ride well. If you haven't ever skied on wood, and people, you may ask, why is there such a, uh, an excitement or interest in, in wood skis these days? It's because they have such a damp feel to them. They're such a smooth and silky ride. There's nothing at all wrong with fiberglass skis. I like those too. But there's something special about wood. And I think that one of the reasons that we got away from wood, of course, is they were expensive. And fiberglass skis were cheaper to make. Another thing, though, is that the wood skis, did, they were vulnerable to damage. These skis actually on the very tip I noticed when I was working on them today, I noticed the telltale crack right at the tip. Just a little sliver, just enough. But somewhere along the way, I ran my ski into, who knows, a tree or an embankment, maybe a boulder or something, and it caused some damage. And it uh, was not unusual with wood skis for guys to bust the tips of the skis when they're out skiing in the bush and it was a long way back. So the advantage of course of the fiberglass, they're stronger and just slightly easier to repair.